YouTube, what's good? Welcome back to another Hip Hop Head React to Rock slash Metal Pantera. It's been a little while, we did Pantera a while back. We did Domination <laughs> ages ago. And um, I don't remember specifically what I asked, but I was basically just scrolling through my comments. I had a list a while back of um, songs that I was going to do, suggestions and stuff. I don't know what happened to it. Um, so I was just scrolling through my comments looking for some stuff and someone said about... Um, I actually saw this one twice. Uh, someone said about how it was quite good um, as a as a lyrical song, um, whereas I remember Domination was more about the the music per se. So um, I've been told this one is quite good lyrically, quite uh, poetic, quite strong, quite impactful. Uh, that being said, I don't really know much else about it. It's seven minutes long. I have the lyrics up on the screen, and I've got Genius in case I need it. But let's kick it. I'm sorry. I keep looking like this, and I see the light flicks away. One of the disadvantages of um, my only light source being the outside world which is not great uh, in early January in Manchester but doesn't matter let's listen to some Pantera boop -a boop kick it I do like it already <laughs> Pause there. Um, it reminds me. I'm not necessarily saying. It reminds me of Metallica. Um, I don't know. I, I, based on what I've heard so far, it reminds me specifically of um, Fate of Black a fair bit. Um, and I've spoken a lot of, um, in the past about the way Metallica uh, switches their songs up. Um, and I hasn't. I'm not not hesitant to say this, but I'm conscious of saying this because I've also said stuff in the past where I've been like, hey, it sounds like Metallica, and people have been in the comments and been like. Mm -hmm. Um, to me it does, to me this reminds me, this is just what it reminded me of when I was listening to this, I was being reminded of Fate of Black. Um, there were some lines there a second ago, it, it seems like someone's died, and we'll, we'll, we'll leave the, I'll try and break down the lyrics a bit at the end, I don't want to speculate too much when we're quite early into the song, but he talks about, um, uh, what's within our plans for life, it all seems so real, and then there's that, it all seems so unreal, there's that line in um, uh, Fate of Black where, Deathly loss, this can't be real. Uh, the, refer the Reverend turned to me without a tear in his eyes, nothing new for him to see, I didn't ask why. So obviously they would be used to, almost like as if it was like a funeral maybe, and obviously someone in that line of work would be used to that sort of thing. Um, so I think someone's died, but we'll come back to the lyrics la later when I've heard more of the song. But um, Sonic, it, it's very good. It, I, I really like it. Um, I like what they did with the, um, subtle probably isn't the word, but the more, um, 
mellow uh, melody to it, and um, and then they obviously like kicked it up with a bit more of a aggressive um, instrumental in the middle there and brought it back. But um, yeah, we'll keep going. I just I have to pause. You know how it works. Let's go. I Yeah, some heavy stuff. So basically, from what I can tell, his um, his partner, his lover, his um, I don't know, I have to say married or whatever, but um, his partner has died, and um, and that's I think why the song goes from the sort of mellow to the. It's like how emotions work in these sort of situations. I can only imagine um, this overwhelming sadness, but then there's also going to be the space of anger as well. Um, there was a bit in there where he, it sounded like he was almost angry at her for leaving him alone sort of thing even though you know deep down he's not actually angry at her for dying unless she died because she was doing something stupid i don't know but um it, it, it's just the way emotions come through in these sorts of situations but um so i feel like the music is is, is reflective of how he's feeling and it's got like the mellow uh smoother sadder bits for his sadness but then it also has some of the more um angry sounding sections because those are the two emotions that will probably come through the most in this sort of uh, situation. Um, it's rough though, like it's 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 um, yeah it's it's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy. Um, the the whole thing of of um, yeah that, that this is a line that I caught in particular. You left me incomplete, all alone as the memories now unfold. That's all you've got left, you know. But it seems like as well. Believe the word, I will unlock my door and pass the cemetery gates. I'm wondering if coming back to Fades Black, if he is now considering um, joining her in the afterlife. We'll see. Let's go. <laughs>
Yeah, so, um, quite a heavy one. And of course, up next, Metallica 1, another very heavy one. Um, uh, Ways on the Mind, yeah, so it, 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 basically his, his partner died. And um, it seems like, and I can bring the description up here, orange. Um, Anselmo had said the lyrics were inspired by the loss of a close friend, but made sure they weren't too personal because it would be too cheesy. Uh, one of the most popular, popular songs, second single of 1990's Cowboys from Hell, the lyrics are about the death of a lover and the prospects of dying or committing suicide to rejoin her in the afterlife. I mean, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's like it's, I can only imagine. It's got to be one of the worst things that you can possibly experience: someone you love dying and being gone forever. Yeah, it's like what he said about being stuck with just the memories. It's tough. It's a it, it's a tough one, and it's one that I'm, I'm fortunate enough to not experience. Well, I've lost family members and stuff, but not like this. Heavy, heavy stuff. Very good song, though, um, on every level, actually. Uh, it was written very well, uh, told a very good story. Remember, like, there's, a, there's a song by a dude called Hopson, who is um, notorious in the hip-hop community for being uh, very corny and very preachy. <laughs> but, um, incidentally, my first ever hip-hop concert, I like him. Uh, he's got some, he's has, he has his moments, he's got some corny songs, um, but some decent songs as well. But he actually has a song called Dream Forever, which is the same sort of prospects, uh, the girl that he loves um, very dearly and, and raps about in that way, um, passes away, and then he ends the song by basically killing himself to be with her. Um, he says something like, I told you, I, I told you if I ever needed to take a bullet for you, I would. It's like the last line of the song, and there's a gunshot. Uh, it's a little bit corny, but that's just what Hobson does. But, um, reminded me of that, I don't know, side note, but uh, that's Dream Forever by Hobson. Um, yeah, no, good song, very good song. Uh, it, it covered every basis, like I said. It was, it, it was, musically, it was, it was uh, interesting, um, it, it was... Uh, it, it was just very well made and also lyrically was it, it was strong as well it, it kind of just ticked all the boxes that was just a good song so um yeah second Pantera song like what we've done so far uh, I should listen to Domination again because I actually haven't uh, since like probably at least within a week or two of whenever I did that re uh, reaction um suggest more stuff whatever you want to suggest uh I'll see you guys in the next one peace guys <laughs>